Hey everybody. I thought I'd let you know what I actually read in September. We haven't done a reading wrap up for a while. There's no haul this month because I've got four books. Because as you know, I'm trying to save money. Uh, but I will go through what I read very, very quickly. There's a mixture of Kindle and physical books here. Um, and let's start. So the first one I read was Julie Ellis Loyalties. Picked this up in a TBR jar. Two sisters, uh, part forever divided by the love of the same man. Um, Naomi and Rachel. Naomi forms a company called Miller Timber. Rachel moves away with somebody else. She marries a man and forms um, a company called Lazarus Timber. Now, Rachel's company is a lot smaller um, than Naomi's. Naomi's is ma massive, but she's very strict with her family and they're not very close. In fact, they're a complete disaster. But um, Rachel's family are very very close although they are a lot smaller business when Naomi Miller dies uh, or just before she dies she wants to meet her grand niece so her grand niece goes to visit her aunt and her name is Anne and she meets her and it turns out that Naomi in some twisted way of making amends in her will has said that she and her granddaughter Felicia, cousin, must run Miller Timber together for 20 years, train up on the job and learn to do it and run it for 20 years. After 20 years they get the company or a certain amount of the company, it works out at 60 million dollars each. Um, so the book spends 20 years and uh, history repeats itself at one point. It was interesting, it was a bit long but I did enjoy it. I gave it I gave it three stars because I thought it was a bit dragged out, but it was all right. I then read, well, finally finished reading a, a Kindle book, and that was They're Watching You by Chelsea... somebody? Echasso. So this tells the story of a girl who's going to school, a very privileged school, very expensive school, um, and her best friend disappears, Polly and she's desperate to find her and she learns that Polly had jo joined this strange sort of cult thing. So she manages to get herself, and I can't remember her name for the life of me. Did I write it down? Marin. Um, so Marin manages to get herself invited into this cult where they play silly games um, that are quite dangerous to try and find Polly. She works her way up through the ranks, winning challenges with one of her other friends and comes to her head that this is a very, very big cult that's been running for decades and there are people in high places in it, um, making sure that the cult survives and giving people what they want so that Marin's school fees go away and things like that when her father's in trouble and can't afford to pay them. She um, eventually finds Polly but it's not all as she thought. It was it was okay. I gave it three stars again. I felt, it, it, again, it dragged on and it's very, very weird and unlikely. But then that's the whole books. This fantasy. They're fantasy, aren't they, books? But there were some really good dynamics in it and, you know, I really, really enjoyed the, the writing style. I think Chelsea's a really good writer, so I look forward to reading something else of hers in the future. I'm going to change the battery on the camera because it's decided to go on me. Okay. The next book I read was a reread and it was Curse and Perfectio by Gary Vitico Rubles. My copy has fallen apart. I've read it that many times. Uh, Marin Rose Brentwood Hacienda, the story of her final months. Um, I decided to reread this book just simply because there was some, um, obviously, a lot of news uh, this, uh, well, last month about the possibility that Marin's house might be demolished. Uh, it had been purchased uh, by somebody and they had submitted a permit to demolish, which was approved, and then it was rescinded when a local council found out and they are trying to get it designated a historic monument. Now, regardless of what happens, we know who owns it. Basically, the owner of the next door house, 12306 Fifth Helena Drive, wants to demolish Marion's house and have that as a garden because they've got a big house and very little garden. They've got enough garden and they've got a pool, but they want, I think they want to put something like tennis courts in or something. But we don't know what's happening with that. But I decided to read this. It's a really interesting book on Marion's last months. How she found, bought and furnished her house. There are drawings of the house in there, um, 
inside of the house of, of, of various furnishings, photographs from Christie's auction where a lot of stuff was sold. There's photographs of, um, where, where was that one I saw? The outside of the house, which is really nice, like these ones. Um, taken by, um, those two were taken by Greg Schreiner. Um, this one is a four star read. It's so fascinating, obviously. It's Marilyn, what more can I say? I read one of the Hollywood books on my good read, on my challenge, because I, I always set myself challenges every year. I'm not going to next year, I'm going to have a year off, but I'll talk about that at the end of the year, what I'm going to be doing reading-wise next year. And this year was to read one new Marilyn Monroe book, one Hollywood new Hollywood book, and one Agatha Christie. I am up to date with all of the Marilyn and all of the Agatha Christie, but I am behind on Hollywood. But last month I did read a book about old Hollywood. I read Fatty by Andrea Edmonds. Feeling or Victim, the real story behind one of Hollywood's most notorious tragedies. This is the life story of Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle. Uh, he hated the nickname Fatty, obviously, because you, who wouldn't, let's be honest. And he, I don't know why I kept, oh, it's this thing, I'm oh, sorry, my... So it tells about his life story right up until the day he dies, how he coped with the scandal of the Virginia Rappé death, because um, he was accused of murdering her when he really didn't. Um, she was portrayed by the DA in, in San Francisco as being this innocent woman, girl, which she actually wasn't. She was known a, a known prostitute, not that there's anything wrong with that, and, I, and you know, had he killed her, he should have gone to jail. Um, but that she had 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 a notion for uh, when she got drunk she would run around tearing her clothes off I, I guess there was some sort of mental illness I don't know what but there was and she'd recently had an abortion that potentially probably could have caused her death and they blamed it on on him it's a very sad story because his career never really recovered and as it was starting to recover like a decade later he he sadly died so he never got to um re gain the fame that he'd lost which is really sad because he was a very funny man very talented um yeah now talking of my challenge agatha christie for the month was the adventure of the western star which is an hercule poirot most of the ones i'm reading are hercule poirots this is basically the story of uh, a woman who comes to hercule poirot um a famous movie star asking for help saying she'd received a letter uh, saying that if she didn't return the diamond necklace she had, the diamond, the Western Star, to its Chinese original owners because it should have been in some sort of god, then a terrible fate would befall her. I wanted to find out that there was a, potentially a second one um, owned by an aristocrat. However, it turns out that there is only one diamond. There is no uh, Chinese mystical god that has to have the diamonds replaced in it or something bad will happen. But what happened was that uh, the Western Star was uh, stolen from its original owner and a paste replica put in its place and she had been given the real one and the original owner is trying to get it back. Basically, that's it. Nice little Agatha Christie story. Again, four stars because I just love these Agatha Christie's. After that, I read a children's book. This is There's a Snake in My School by David Williams. So Miranda goes to school and it's Bring Your Pet to School Day and she her pet is a snake. So she and all the kids take their pets to school. Um, the head teacher, Miss Blout, Miss Blout, doesn't like them so she confiscates them all, puts them in the cupboard except for the snake which she puts in the bin and sits on top of it. At the end of the day Miranda goes to try and get her snake and the other pets back to find that uh, the snake is uh, Penelope is sitting in Miss, at Miss Blount's desk wearing Miss Blount's glasses. Miss Blount has disappeared and so she rescues all the uh, animals for the, from the cupboard. It's a really nice sweet story. That one, I, I gave that four stars. It's just so sweet and Jennifer loves it. So it's one I read to Jennifer. One of the worst, well, the worst book I read or attempted to read this month is actually this one. This is for the new Marilyn ones. Um, it includes factual and fiction and this one is just called Marilyn Vampire Diaries Romance by um, a lady named Brittany Shakespeare. Yeah, well, Shakespeare she ain't because it's awful. Um, I'm, it's, I mean, obviously I don't like the way it's formatted in this A4 size book. It would be better if it had been put in a normal size book. 
Um, obviously it's self-published, so the formatting is atrocious. It starts off in 1950 when she's making, um, I believe, The Outer Jungle. It uses a picture of Susan Griffiths in the seven year age scene. Um, I mean, it does have some of her own words, but then it also has the story that it's 1950 and they're talking about Kennedy and I don't think he became much of a so famous at that point. It's almost as if she knew him at this point and she didn't. Um, so, so. And she's a vampire and there were vampires and it was just, oh, I couldn't. It was awful. Awful. A book I have loved for a long time is The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by Fra F L. Frank Baum. Now I had a box set of all of his uh, Oz books for my birthday and I am currently reading The Wizard of Oz to Jennifer chapter by chapter every night. But I wanted to finish it because I love the story so obviously I read The Wizard of Oz. We all know the story. Dorothy um, is in her house with her dog Toto and a tornado comes and whisks the house away to Oz where it lands on the Wicked Witch of the East. Gives her the silver slippers. In the film they're ruby granted but in the book it's silver. And then she decides to go to visit Oz to try and request him to come home, at send her home. Oops, good job I know what chapter one. And then on the last um, they get, she meets her friends uh, the lion, the, the scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion. Oh, we're near the end, actually. Are we? Not yet. We are getting there. So I love this story. I love the film. That's the one we've read. Um, obviously, it's, it is one of my most favourite films. But I also love the books. But I've never read the rest of them. So I'm really looking forward to starting The Marvelous Land of Oz this month even if I haven't finished reading The Wizard to Jennifer because it depends on what mood she's in. If she wants something else she gets something else. Um, I also read this book Sunset on the Square by Lilac Mills. This tells the story of a lady who lives in Tenerife. Her name is Elspeth and uh, Tenerife got me on this one because I love Tenerife. Um, she's in her late 50s. She's lived in Tenerife for over 15 years. Her husband died four years previously. Her friend who runs a hotel has a double booking and asks her to put up um, this guest that they've got no room for, Charles. And he moves it into a spare room. It's only supposed to be for like th two nights, something like that, three nights. Um, and he stays with her and they get on really well. And eventually she falls in love with him. She doesn't forget her husband, Ray. She never will. He's actually, his ashes are buried in her garden. But she and him fall in love and he makes plans to move out there and they get married and all that stuff but he takes over the shop that she works in because the owner has to move back to Germany to take care of his father who has motor neuron disease. Yeah, It's a very quick wrap up um, obviously. The last book I read, another children's book, another David Walliams, this one is the story of Geronimo, the penguin who thought he could fly and I just thought this was adorable. Oh, Sunset on, on the, the square gave four stars too, by the way. This uh, little penguin is born and, and as you know the emperor penguins, the fathers look after the eggs while the mothers are off looking for food. He hatches and he believes he can fly because he's a bird, he thinks he should fly. And so he tries to fly, he jumps off of rocks and stuff and hurts himself. Um, and all the other penguins are saying to his dad, look, you've got to convince him he can't fly, you've got to get him over this. And his dad says, well, look, when we were little penguins, we all thought we should be able to fly, didn't we? And they went, yeah, yeah, yeah we, we did. So the adult penguins come up with this ingenious plan to let him fly. And all it is really is they stand on his head, their head, so they think, so he thinks the world's upside down, so that they get him to jump in the water and he's swimming, but he believes he's flying. And I just thought it was so adorable. I had to give it five stars because it was so sweet. And the illustrations inside these books are just beautiful. So you can see, like. He's, he's in the water but he thinks he's the king of the sky and of course he'll grow out of it and he'll realise you know that he wasn't but I just, I just think it's such a sweet book so sometimes we all need to read a children's book just to remember the the innocence of being young I think so those are all the books 10 books I read in um September it's only October the 3rd when I'm filming this I've already read three books this month so I will advise I am nowhere near 
going to finish my Goodreads challenge which I set at 120. I'm literally I've read 102 books but if I carry on like this I might catch up a bit so uh, that's it from me for this month. Next month there might be a book haul uh, with the books I got in September and uh, if I pick up any more uh, but there'll be charity shop books but that, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you're all reading good. Let me know what you're reading if you are a reader down below in the comments. Recommend stuff to me um, or if you want any recommendations on a particular genre ask me and if I know I, I certainly will. I mean I always say that if I reckon if I give something five stars that's my recommendation so and pretty much four stars too and I'll see you soon. Bye everyone.